this video, we'll be exploring the functions and features of the Fujikura 90R that enable efficient, high-quality mass fusion splicing. We'll also go over some helpful tips and tricks for improving your splice process. In the last video, we talked about core alignment splicing with the 90S Plus. So how is the 90R different from its single fiber sibling? The first difference you'll notice is the name difference between the two models. Not only is this to differentiate the splicers apart from each other, but it also hints at the fundamental difference between them. Although the 90R can splice both single and ribbon fibers, the 90S Plus is optimized for splicing single fiber, whereas the 90R is optimized for splicing ribbon fiber. The way we go about splicing ribbons together is by a process known as mass fusion. The mass fusion process allows you to scale up the number of fibers you can splice together with each arc. While it is possible to splice ribbons together one fiber at a time, increasing fiber counts make this a costly and time-consuming process, even for the fastest and most seasoned operators. The 90R steps up to the plate here, presenting its ability to splice 12 fibers at a time with excellent precision and low splice loss. This means that in order to splice a 144 fiber cable, you'll only need 12 splices rather than the 144 splices you'd need if you were to splice all of them together as singles. Mass fusion splicers can be classified as being both cladding alignment splicers and fixed V-groove splicers. In order to splice 12 fibers at a time, two sets of 12 V-grooves are machined into a ceramic block, which is mounted in the splicer. The grooves are perfectly aligned with one another, which allows them to passively align the fibers together. This alignment mechanism, however, leaves the V-groove susceptible to dirt, dust, and debris, which can build up over time and affect fiber alignment, which is why the 90R comes with a set of spare V-grooves. Whenever you start seeing the large fiber offset error that won't go away no matter how much you clean the V-grooves, simply swap out the V-groove block for the spare one so you can keep splicing, then clean the dirty V-grooves later when you have time. When you open up your 90R case, you'll likely have a kit that looks like mine, which includes the splicer, the CT50 cleaver, an RSO3 thermal stripper, a pair of fiber holders, as well as other accessories like the splicer's charging cord, a USB cable, a pair of spare electrodes, and a spare V-groove block. The splicer can be set up to match a wide variety of work styles and workflows, so taking time for setup will keep splicing the simple and quick process it should be. Following good setup steps will allow you to adapt the splicer to your ideal workflow. The splicer's operation mode is the setting that determines the level of automation you want the splicer to contribute to your process. So start your setup by choosing an operation mode that matches your workflow. This can be changed at any point, so don't hesitate to try different options when figuring out what works best for you. Turn your splicer on and go to Home, then Splice Settings, then Fundamental Settings. In the Fundamental Settings menu, select Operation Mode. This allows you to choose the level of automation you wish to use in your splicing process. With the 90R, you have four operation mode options to choose from. Auto, Normal, Manual, and Customized. Auto operation mode offers full automation from start to finish. Once you set the fiber holders in the splicer, the machine takes over from there. In the Normal operation mode, the splicer automatically starts when you set the fiber holders in the splicer, but then requires you to press the set key to open the wind protector and proof test the fibers after the splice. Manual mode is just what it sounds like, manual, where you, as the operator, press the set key to start the splice process, press the set key again at the pause state, and press the set key yet again to open the wind protector and proof test the splice. In the customized operation mode, you can customize the automation start trigger, automation reaction time, and the position of the wind protector at the on, reset, finish, and error states. A quick note, if you're splicing in an especially dusty environment, I'd recommend using the normal mode. In this mode, the heater oven door will remain closed most of the time. After your splice, press the heat key to open the oven door, then hold tension on the ribbon while you drop the splice and sleeve into the heater oven. After heating is finished, the heater oven door will automatically open for about 10 seconds, after which it will automatically close again to prevent dust from entering. The next step is to set up the Bluetooth communication link between the splicer, the CT50, and the RSO3. Note that the CT50 does not ship with batteries, so you'll need to install two AAA batteries to use the cleaver's Bluetooth functions. This step is optional, but it can be incredibly useful for tracking helpful information such as battery life, cleaver blade position, cleave count, cleaver blade life, 
thermal stripper blade life, and thermal stripper temperature. With Bluetooth communication enabled, you also gain access to automated cleaver blade management features and automated stripper temperature management features as well. First, make sure that the Bluetooth communications is enabled by going to Home, then Other Settings, then Bluetooth. In the Bluetooth Settings menu, make sure that Bluetooth is turned on for the splicer, cleaver, and stripper. Exit to the Ready screen and select Add Cleaver or Add Stripper to initiate pairing with each device. While you're in the Pairing with Cleaver or Pairing with Stripper screen, hold down the Link button on the cleaver or stripper until the blue LED starts blinking. This indicates that the device is in pairing mode and can connect to the splicer. Shortly after the device enters pairing mode, you should see the serial number of the device appear on the screen of the splicer, then touch to pair. When pairing is successful, the blinking LED will remain steady for a few seconds before turning off. Press Reset, then go to the Ready screen, where you can now see the paired device along with its information. When using any 90s series splicer, in conjunction with a CT50 and RSO3, you can take advantage of active blade management, which uses the Bluetooth communication between the splicer and the connected cleaver to control the cleaver's blade position. When a certain number of bad cleaves are detected in succession, the splicer can command the cleaver blade to rotate. When paired with proper cleaver maintenance and splicer v-groove maintenance, this function uses the splicer to keep track of the cleave count for every blade position and rotate when a position is used up so you don't have to manage the cleaver manually. Under Other Settings, enable this feature in the Bluetooth Settings menu and adjust device-specific parameters in the Cleaver Settings and Stripper Settings menus. There's also a shortcut to Bluetooth Settings on the Home screen on the right-hand side along the upper edge of the screen. The final setup step is performing an arc calibration. Select the shortcut on the middle of the left-hand side of the screen to open up the arc calibration function. Select the splice mode you're going to be using, then prepare two ribbons of the fiber to be used with that splice mode, load them together into the splicer, and press set or play to begin. This process should only take a few seconds and is not only a part of initial setup, but should also be done at the beginning of every day to keep your splicer running at peak performance. After setting up your machine, pick a splice mode corresponding to the fiber type you're going to be using, and pick the heater mode corresponding to the shrink sleeves you have. Here, I have two standard single mode ribbons, so I'll use SM Auto as my splice mode. Picking the right splice mode is one of the biggest contributors to splicing success. Be sure to identify the ribbon type and fiber type you're using and select the splice mode that matches the fiber in front of you. The SWR, SWR Auto, and Spiderweb Fast splice modes are unique to the Fujikura splicers and take special consideration for the uniqueness of Spiderweb ribbon as opposed to the encapsulated or flat ribbon. A spiderweb ribbon is not encased in an outer binding layer and requires a higher heat setting on the RSO3 to strip properly. If your RSO3 is Bluetooth connected to the splicer, selecting this mode can automatically change the setting of the stripper to accommodate the heat requirements of spiderweb ribbon. All that's needed for this is to enter other settings, then stripper settings, and make sure the heat parameter control is set to splicer. Any splice mode having the word auto after it has two primary functions. Number one, it will monitor arc power with each splice and make small tweaks from one splice to the next. And two, it will automatically count the number of fibers present for each splice. These functions serve to maintain your arc calibration accuracy as conditions change through the day and keep you splicing efficiently by avoiding unnecessary splice mode changes. Again, note that using an auto splice mode is not a substitute for daily arc calibration. Conditions like temperature, barometric pressure, and humidity all affect how much arc power you need in order to precisely melt the fibers. And since every day has different conditions, start the day with a quick arc calibration to get you started, then use the splice mode ending in auto to keep the initial calibration accurate as the conditions of the day evolve. Any splice mode that has the fast suffix will assume the correct fiber type is loaded, the correct number of fibers are loaded, and adopt the most recently calibrated arc power value in order to perform the splice in as little time as possible. Modes that have either a number or no suffix at all after the listed fiber type are considered special modes. These modes have an extended parameter list you can edit in order to customize your splice recipe. Use one of these modes if you're splicing a special type of fiber, a certain number of fibers, or if you have particular parameters you'd like to change. Choosing a heater mode is fairly straightforward. Most of the time, ribbons are protected with 40mm or MPO protection sleeves. 
However, heating profiles are also available for other protection sleeves, such as when you're splicing single fibers or splicing single fiber fuse connects. After choosing your splice mode and heater mode, prepare the fibers to be spliced by following the acronym SICKLE, that is sleeve, strip, clean, cleave, and load. Sleeve, slide a clean protection sleeve over one of the fibers you're about to splice. Strip, load the ribbon or fiber into the appropriate fiber holder and strip with the RSO3. Clean, clean the exposed glass with a fresh lint-free wipe moistened with only either FCC2 fluid or 99% or greater isopropyl alcohol. Cleave, load the cleaned ribbon into the cleaver and gently lower the cleaving arm to cleave the fiber. Remove the fiber holder from the cleaver before returning the cleaver arm to the ready position. Be sure to return the cleaver to the ready position before cleaving the next ribbon. And load. Immediately after cleaving, load the ribbon directly into the splicer without putting it down on any other surfaces. Putting it down anywhere will increase the risk of getting dust or dirt on the cleaned ends of the fibers as well as in the v-grooves of the splicer. Never clean the ribbon again after cleaving it. It might seem counterintuitive, but this will actually deposit more contamination onto the cleaved ends of the fibers. If you develop good, consistent fiber prep habits, your equipment will thank you and your splices will speak for themselves. Once you've loaded both fiber holders into the splicer, visually verify that all of the fibers have fallen into a V-groove and that none are crossed over each other or missing. At this point, depending on your operation mode, the splicer may start automatically, or you may have to press set or play. If you haven't turned on the pause option, the splicer will proceed through the entire splice where you'll see the fibers come together, be inspected by the splicer, and be spliced together. Again, depending on the operation mode, you may need to press set or play again to tension test the fibers and open the wind protector. I carefully remove the spliced ribbons from the splicer and position the shrink sleeve over the splice by using the positioning feature on top of the heater oven. After centering the sleeve, hold tension on the ribbon and lower it into the heater oven. Fiber splices have very good tensile strength, so don't worry about breaking it. Hold the splice this way until the heater elements capture the splice protector. If you let go too soon, the sleeve will fall below the heat elements and won't shrink correctly. When the heating cycle is finished, lift the protected splice out of the oven and set it down to cool off. It will be quite hot, so wait a minute or so before touching it. The splicing and heating functions of the machine operate independently of each other, so you're free to begin the next splice as soon as the heating cycle starts. Now that the splice is finished, it takes some time to do a few practice splices, explore the settings, and try out different operation modes. Getting to know your equipment is the best way to set yourself up for future success. The better you know the machine, the easier it will be to identify issues and keep yourself up and running. The 90R is a precision calibrated machine and operates within incredibly small tolerances. If you take some time to read the instruction manual, follow the recommended procedures, and keep up with routine cleaning and maintenance, your equipment will thank you, and again, your splices will speak for themselves. The 90R is the premier splicer of the mass fusion world, boasting the Fujikura reputation for reliability and durability. When you walk up to the job site with your splicer case in hand, you have more than just a splicing machine. You have the 24-7, 365 live support of the AFL splicer team, along with our expertise and our dedication to your success. If you have any questions, comments, or issues, simply give us a call at 1-800-235-3423, option 3.